Hello everyone, I am Nick Harrison with Rocky River Woodworks and today I'm going to be making this router uh, sled coping sled. Stick around. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my T-Track and lay out where I want it on my router table. I'm going to trace both sides of that line, and then I'm going to install a piece of oak. I'm going to screw this down into my router table. This is going to act as a stop or a track for my router to go against. I'm going to set the depth of my bit in my router to be the depth of my T-Track. And then I'm just going to router out a groove in the top of my router table. I'm going to make sure that the track will fit, clean it up if I need to a little bit, and then head over to the miter saw and go very slowly and cut the track to length to be the width of my router table and then use the screws to screw through the T-track into the router table securing it in place. The next thing is to measure how wide I want the sled to be and in my case I think I'm going to do 9 inches by 12 inches Make sure that that fits and looks good, and then mark the location of the two holes that I'm going to drill. The two holes will then have the T-Track bolts drilled through them. I'm going to change the bit in my router to be a groove cutting bit, and then cut a groove through the sled. This will allow... Um, space for another bolt to slide back and forth freely. The purpose of this is to mount a block on it so that I can secure my workpiece in place. It'll all make sense here shortly. Here I'm just routering out the back side of that groove um, to allow room for the back side of the T-Track bolt to slide. Here I cut the block and I mounted it on there. This will allow it to move and hold my piece in place. This is just a stop block I'm making on the back that will be in a permanent position. Now I'm mounting a clamp on here to hold the workpiece in place. So now you can sort of see how the system works. What I am going to do instead of using those knobs is use two nuts and bind them together so that the bolts that are in the T-Track can stay at a permanent depth on the bottom in the T-Track. I don't want them to be able to tighten up and I don't want them to be able to loosen up. I want them to be pretty much permanent. After that's done, my track is complete. So I'm going to stop the project here. Um, I, you could go on to add some sort of handles here to move this along. I'm fine with just moving it like this. Um, it does have a little bit of play. I think the solution to that would be to drill these holes slightly smaller so that then bolts can't wiggle around quite as much. Another thing you could do is take these nuts off and put washers um, on here and on the bottom just to help keep it in place a little better. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the play that it does have in it, I don't think is going to be enough to, to be able to reflect seeing the gap on the rails or the styles, um, depending on what you're, uh, what you're doing there. So I just think this is a lot safer method um, than trying to run it across barehanded. Um, you, now that I have this T-Track installed, I can also uh, use it for a, a, some other sort of sled or some sort of uh, miter gauge across here or whatever. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this project helpful and found value in it. You can find this project and more on my website at www.rockyriverwoodworks.com. You can also find me on social media at Rocky River WW. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.